Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this episode of Really Dicey. This is Manny, and I'm here with RJ. And today we're going to talk about Candlekeep Mysteries, the latest adventure source book from Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, this is 17 adventures uh, with a, a, a brief chapter in the beginning about what Candlekeep is um, and a, a little uh, explanation of what the book is for, um, for for people that bought the book and, uh, and a, 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 an appendix at the end for all the contributors that were involved with this. Each adventure is written by someone different, someone that only only Christopher Perkins, the only one I recognize um, as one of the main people in Wizard of the Coast that have written this, but the rest of the writers are, are independent writers outside of Wizard of the Coast. So it's, I'm really excited about this book. Um, technical aspects, this is about 220 pages. Again, 17 chapters of adventures uh, and uh, two, two, uh, two chapters that, uh, that explain the book and give credit for the, the, the chapter beginning, um, Candlekeep. As you may or may not know, it's a, pretty much a town that's a, a giant library. Um, does it explain how it came to be a little bit vaguely? Um, not, uh, but it's pretty much the idea is that if you want to enter Candlekeep, you have to give a book um, to enter in and explore its incredibly huge library. And um, um, it seems like <laughs> the way the book is put together, it seems like a very dangerous place. I wouldn't touch a book if I was there at all because it was like it leads to something. Um, but it's 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 uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great uh, series of adventures. Each one has deals with a, a book and a mystery of some sort. And each book is very different from one another um, and leads you to very different types of adventures. We will do our best not to spoil this for you. Um, it's this is a very difficult, <laughs> very difficult task for me because I, I there's there's so much I want to say, but I don't want we don't want to spoil some of the great things that you'll find out for yourselves. Plus, we don't want to ruin anything for your players. So there are 17 adventures, one for every level from one through 16, and then an additional adventure for level four. So there's two adventures for level four. All the other levels get one adventure. Um, but before the adventures, there is a chapter about Candlekeep. So if you're already familiar with Candlekeep, then none of this will be uh, new information probably for you. Uh, I'm not familiar with Candlekeep, so I found it interesting. Um, and that is useful for setting up the setting of how you go and get these books and discover these mysteries. Um, but the adventures that you run across are, are different types. There are some adventures where uh, the book has set you on a path uh, to, a, to a dungeon to solve some sort of mystery. I don't know if gonzo is the right word, but there's <laughs> some that, that uh, deal with uh, sci-fi a little bit, touch on yeah. that. Um, uh, some deal with um, alternate planes of existence. Yeah, some of them are sandboxes um, with mysteries in the sandbox. Uh, some of them have small dungeons, like you mentioned. Some are um, point to point, like you go here and then you go there and then you go there. Um, one of them has a timed uh, event. Um, one of them is a series of events that happen to, to the players um, in no particular um, in a certain order, but in no particular uh, time frame. So they're all very different. Of course, there's lots of monsters in the modules that are in the monster manual. And you do need the monster manual in order to run these modules. Um, but there are some new ones as well. Um, there are 27 new stat blocks in this, um, in this book. Um, and some of them are terrifying high level monsters with unique layer actions. And some of them are um, small, low CR um, monsters. I'll just throw one out that's not a spoiler. Uh, for example, the swarm of animated books, as you can imagine, this is a, in the Candlekeep theme. Um, one of the little gems I liked about the swarm of animated books is their attack is called Book Club. <laughs> and then we have new items as well, new magic items in uh, Candlekeep mysteries and that is um well you're going to need the dungeon master's guide as well because lots of the modules reference magic items in the dungeon master's guide but some of the magic items are reflavored a bit uh so for example there's a book on the end of a chain which is basically a plus one flail but it's a book on the end of a chain um some magic items are augmented with additional properties and then there's some unique new magic items there's seven of them um two of them are legendary um 
and two very rare, one rare, one uncommon, and one is not actually treated as a magic item. So I don't know what the rarity is, but it's a magic item. Each chapter is just jam packed, uh, full information. Um, but the art that they have though is, is great. Uh, the, the map that they have at the end of the book of Candlekeep is, is superb. Um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, the art is really great. Um, and they really focused on the art that you're going to show players. So all of the NPCs and villains get um, rather large um, portraits in the book. So in previous books, you would might get a uh, an eighth of a page for a or a sixth of a page. Um, in this one, you frequently will get half a page or a quarter of a page for an NPC. Um, and the, the art is full color and it's great. So every adventure starts off with a particular book in the library of Candlekeep. And every one of those books is is uh, also illustrated very nicely in this book. Um, each one is very unique, um, has some really interesting thing about it, and you just want to look at it, and it makes you want to open that book and see what's inside of it and say, what's the deal with this book? Uh, the maps, um, so there's only one color map in the book, and that's the map of the, the exterior of Candlekeep, the Court of Air. All the other maps in the book are monochrome, and they're functional, but they're not artistic. Uh, so those are probably not things that you would show your players or print off. Uh, you would probably sketch them out yourself or I don't know what you do. Um, but they're not um, like nice colorful maps like we used to get in some of the other books. There is a poster map at the end of this book, which you mentioned, um, which is the entire Candlekeep exterior. But it doesn't really add much beyond what you see in the book's Court of Air map. Uh, so it's not really necessary to detach that from the back of the book because there's nothing else you need in that map um, if you want to preserve your your book in its pristine state. Um, I agree with you about how I, I love how that each book is is very different from one another. Um, each book in the adventure that starts off your adventure. My favorite one is the Book of Cylinders. I thought that was really creative. It's the, the idea that you have to open it up and it's actually three cylinders and some clay and you um, wet the clay and lay it down and you roll the, the cylinders down. So you see a, a story being um, created as you're, you're scrolling down. I thought that was really creative. So one of the settings that we didn't mention earlier is uh, a spa, right? So there's a spa. And what's interesting in this book is now we have rules for uh, doing squats, um, playing tug of war, um, how much massages and waxing and pedicures cost. Um, things that I didn't realize I needed. <laughs> um, other interesting finds for me were one of the adventures has a magic self-cleaning toilet, which sort of makes sense. i um, not sure why every wizard doesn't have this. <laughs> um, and then there's also rules now for having one of your organs replaced by a mummy lord's organ. Um, like what happens then? Well, if you ever wanted to know, uh, now you'll know. Mm. And what about being launched into space? Uh, what are the rules for that? Well, <laughs> if that ever happens, uh, you'll have some rules for that too. <laughs> you know, one thing that we didn't say before was that, uh, yes, there's different settings, there's different places you can go, but also the tone of the adventures are very different from one another. Some that are gothic horror, mm -hmm. um, some are typical straightforward action adventures, some are comedies. Uh, mm -hmm. or or uh, or thrillers um yep. so it there's it's a lot of variety of, of different styles of gaming available yeah absolutely and some of my favorite um moments in this book are those different styles because you get this, this sort of standard out of the box you have to go and do this thing and there's you have some reason for it but without a lot of atmosphere, but then you have ones that have a lot of atmosphere. You're going to have, um, like you said, the Gothic horror one, uh, which, ha which has echoes of uh, Ravenloft. Um, you've got one, we've, you've got the spa, you've got um, a martial arts uh, themed one, right? Uh, you've got one in mines, you've got one on the sea coasts, um, in the desert, desert necropolis, with a very uh, ancient Egypt feel. Um, yeah, they're all very different. One of my favorite ones is the one where uh, there's a, a mystery of a music being played in your head and you're slowly, everyone around you is slowly becoming mad because no one can get the song out of their head. And uh, the fact that this is an adventure that you just can't beat up 
someone um, or destroy a bad guy at the end. You have to really be creative in your thinking how to solve this mystery. Uh, I thought that was fantastic. Um, uh, for for a straight up adventure, the the one dealing with uh, the golem with the uh, the Dracolich, um, that adventure that had a lot of story and heart. Um, the spa I liked a lot uh, just because it's so different. But there there's the one uh, dealing with the uh, the um, Let's see, without trying to give it too much away, um, dealing with the book that transports you to uh, uh, a ma more magical time in, um, in the Forgotten Realms where you're trying to stop a corruption of a, of a unicorn avatar. Uh, I thought that was really interesting. Um, but again, yeah, there's just so many different types of adventures in this, from uh, murder mysteries to, um, to trying to uh, piece together a uh, 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 lost part of history. Yeah. And the thing about mystery adventures that makes it difficult is being able to provide clues without, without players getting stuck. Hmm. And for the most part, it looks like these adventures have been well play tested because any places where the players could have been stopped cold by a failed skill check, um, there are ways around that. Um, I did have uh, one concern in the level one adventure, which is there's a couple of secret doors that if you don't get them, um, you're going to have a really hard time solving the mystery. Um, but the one I really loved a lot was the, the book called The Curious Tale of Wisteria Vale. I won't say what it's about, but um, it's, it's a multi-layered um, mystery. Shemshimi's Bedtime Rhyme. Um, that's my favorite one, definitely. Also want to add that um, certain beginning scenarios uh, for these adventures um, are, are, you may need to kind of homebrew a reason why uh, the characters find a book. Uh, so you may have to do some little preparation for that. And they give you options at the beginning of each adventure on how to incorporate the book and the adventure beginning, um, different ways you could do it. So they're not assuming that you're going to do it just one way. And honestly, there are a lot of people who play um, the book obsessed sort of character. Um, it's a pretty common uh, character type. So I think it would be pretty easy to get a book somehow into the hands of one of those characters and make things happen. Hmm. So uh, who should get this book and why? Uh, well, players should not get this book, of course, because um, it is uh, adventures. Um, DMs should get this book. I think most DMs should get this book because basically what it is is it's a bunch of adventures that are ready to go. You keep it on your shelf. And when you need to slip in something into an ongoing campaign, or you just need a one shot, um, you just grab it off the shelf and pick up one of these adventures and, and go with it. Um, they're great as one shots and they're great as slipping them into some larger story. And most of these adventures even have ways of tying in some larger story of your own to this adventure, whether it's in the beginning of the adventure or whatever comes out at the end of the adventure. I agree with you, uh, players. Uh, there's nothing in here that'll help make your character better. There's no um, uh, extra feats, subclasses, nothing like that. Um, uh, yeah, it's definitely for, for game masters that are just, um, maybe they're campaign fatigued. They just want to do a quick one shot or it's great for anyone that's never uh, game master before and they want to try just one quick adventure. And um, none of these adventures, in my opinion, are really hard to run. They, they're, 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 they give you enough detail and information so that, um, that uh, you can you know, just run the adventure uh, efficiently, but also give you possible ending options as well, which I thought that was great. That lets you know, like, all right, what happens if you don't defeat the, the, the the, the big bad at the end. Um, what happens if you let this person go? What happens if you don't fulfill the quest? What happens? What, so that, I'm really glad they have those options because they um, uh, it, it may stump new new game masters. Um, but but uh, yeah, I I'm really happy to have this in my collection. Not only it's it's probably I would say this is probably right now one of my favorite books um, that's come out from them. That's because there's just such a great variety. Of, of, of different adventures, you know, whatever I'm in the mood for, um, if, <laughs> whether it be something very crazy or something very traditional, I have, now I have something that I can just um, use for that, for whatever I want. Yeah. Mystery adventures are, are pretty hard to write anyways, uh, and to get them right. So it's great to have like a, a bank of mystery adventures, mystery themed adventures. 
um, that you can throw in when you want to have a mystery or even that you can adapt in your own way because it's got all the clues laid out, all the characters laid out, all the motivations are there um, for a great mystery. Um, it is probably, it's one of my, it's in my top three of modules uh, of the adventure books. Um, I like sandboxy style, so I like the sandbox ones that are in here. Um, yeah, it's definitely one that I'm going to keep around. Viewers, um, let us know once you pick up this book. Let us know um, what are some of your favorite adventures that you've read from here. Uh, what would you use and what, would, what wouldn't what would you use? Um, and that's not much more I can say. Hush, hush. So, uh, so uh, yes, um, thank you for watching. Stay safe and have a good day. Thank you.